Okay, in this tutorial, what we're going to do is quickly look through the Space Designer Reverb plugin, um, which is the reverb unit you'll be using most of often. Um, it's the one that most often comes bundled with the presets. So whenever you load open your library here, and um, if you're using the main settings here and go into any of these settings, usually if they've got any reverb applied, it will be the Space Designer. Um, it's one of the best sounding reverbs um, in Logic. There are many um, reverb plugins, but this is the one that um, in my opinion sounds the best. It's what's known as a convolution reverb so it's actually using samples of real spaces so they react much more realistically to sound going through them than old style reverbs which were based on algorithms which were literally maths uh, modeling a space. So um, it's a very powerful reverb so we're just going to delve straight in and have a look. Now what I've done is I've just loaded up um, an EXS24 uh, the sampler and all I've done is loaded the grand piano so that I've got no effects on that piano so I can add my own to start with. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to these inserts at the moment. I'm going to show you two ways of actually um, applying this reverb um, quickly. First of all is what I consider to be the correct way of applying reverb which is to use it on a send. So what we do is we connect the send to a bus you can then see that this aux channel has its input set to the bus so I'm going to quickly name that reverb so I know what's going on and then I will insert it on the aux track so I'll come down to reverb you can see your choices here um, these are all more simple reverb plugins so explore those some of them sound good some of them sound not so good it really is really dependent on what type of sound you're after really there's no right or wrong answer but space design is the one we're looking at today so I'm just going to load that up and here we get the often confusing uh, for new people uh, interface of Space Designer and what we would then do is um, play our piano and turn it up and turn up the send to the reverb so we get reverb and what we would do in that instance would be to have the dry channel which is the unaffected signal turned off and we would have the reverb turned up to the maximum So then varying your dry to wet ratio is done here. So if we want less reverb, we turn this down. And if we want more, we turn it up. Now I consider this to be the correct way of applying reverb because you use one um, reverb plugin. Um, so it's much less taxing on your CPU um, if you're using uh, one, one reverb and then sending lots of different instruments because if we have another instrument all we've got to do is send it to that reverb. So it also helps glue your sound together because if you're trying to get everything to sound like it was recorded in a similar environment create that environment using Space Designer and then send whatever channels you want to it and then you're only using one reverb rather than um, putting that plugin on 20 different channels trying to achieve the same result. So that's one way of doing it. Um, and that's the way I've taught it for years because the systems couldn't cope with loading too many reverbs. But now that we've got very um, powerful machines, what we could actually do is, rather than doing it this way around, you can actually insert it directly on the channel. But there's just a few things to be aware of if you are doing it this way around. This is the way that a lot of the presets come loaded. They will actually have the space designer loaded in the channel strip. Now if you look at it this way, what we've seen is because we've loaded it on a channel, the dry channel is turned all way, almost to the, to the full, to the max, so that we can actually hear the dry channel coming through it and the reverb is much less and this will actually be the equivalent of the send control. So this is how much of the reverb we're hearing. So if I turn this off and turn them dry up, what we will hear is the dry channel, i.e. the unaffected piano. So if I turn this down, the dry channel will get quieter. So we need to have that somewhere near maximum. If you have it less than maximum, all you're doing is attenuating the dry signal. So you pretty much want to have that on max, unless you're going for a special effect. And then we can turn the reverb up to get the balance of the dry to the wet sound. So somewhere around there sounds quite nice. Now what you can also do, um, if you're going for special effects, is turn the dry much further down and turn the reverb up, so then we'll hear much more of the wet sound and less of the dry sound. So you get a kind of 
Okay. You can almost hear the envelope of the uh, the reverb coming in there. So that's two ways of instantiating reverb, just to just so that you're aware of the two different ways you can treat it and the different approach. So if you're using it on a send, have the reverb set to max and the dry off. If you're in, inserting it on a channel to channel basis, have the dry set to max and then find your, your level of required reverb here. So I'm just gonna leave it around here for a minute because now we've got it like this, I might as well carry on showing you the reverb itself. Now there's two ways of using this um, plugin. We can use a synthesized IR. IR stands for impulse response, which is essentially the response of a room. Um, this is very capable of, you can actually create your own reverb impulses. So you can actually record a space. So if you wanted to, went into a church, for example, you can set up speakers and mics, create a short sample, um, like a firing pistol or something and, and actually record the sound of that church and then input that into this reverb so it's it's um, got huge potential so you can either synthesize an impulse response or you can load an impulse response sample now what we're going to do first is just look at the synthesized impulse response because this is um, uh, the first st stage um, in uh, creating your own little reverbs here so we've got this main window here and if you see in the background kind of faded out you've got this kind of waveform and you can see a master image of it here. And this is modeling, this is kind of showing you what the reverb is doing. And over the top of this, you've got various windows. So you've got volume, filter, and density envelopes, which will all affect the uh, nature of the response curve. And if you can see that you've still got, even though they're not uh, they're the ones that you've selected at the moment, you've got red, yellow, and blue, you can see them in the background, and they will all affect it. So for example, if I change the volume envelope, this is how the uh, response will change its volume over time. Um, if you're still slightly confused over envelopes, um, I suggest you go back to the, the Vanguard video, which will go into envelopes um, in a bit more detail. But what we can do is we can change how this response changes over time. So if we do this, it's just going to load itself here. And then what will happen is you'll see that the, the waveform in the background changed to mirror what we've now set up as our envelope. So rather than before, the attack phase was very quick. So it was very quickly getting to its maximum volume. And you can see that that waveform mirrors it in the background. If we actually change that now to be over here somewhere, you'll see that the waveform is actually taking time to get to its maximum level. And what we can do is we can even play around with it a bit more to get it to um, kind of be quieter and then peak. So if I keep um, changing around with this and make it sound very different, what we can do now is you can hear now that the reverb is kind of staying at a certain level and then blossoming up to its maximum volume. And we can change the decay phase as well. What we can do is we can zoom that to fit the window or we can look at just the attack phase or just the decay phase. And also you can filter it with, with this filter attachment here. So you've got this filter, you can turn it on and off. You can see that the yellow phase disappears and we can turn the resonance up and we can select a 12 dB, 6 dB low pass or we've got a high pass and a band pass filter. Each time you do a massive change, it's going to do this kind of loading window as it recalculates. So you won't instantly hear um, changes you make. But if we go to the filter envelope, you can hear that now that there's a, a filter being applied. And we can judge how quickly the filter filters out. Um, I'm going to want it to filter all the way to the bottom and filter so that we've got a small curve so it stays at one level and then it will drop down. So we can radically change this sound. So now my filter should come in and out. So you can really create your own space here and, and you can create quite warped textures. Um, so this is going to be really useful for your, for your composition task in your A2 year, creating your own um, signature reverbs as well as your own signature sounds. And you've got the density envelope, which is, uh, again, a similar thing. Um, the idea for you really is to just play around with these and see what you think. 
Um, you've also got an EQ. So you that's where this section of the reverb comes in. So you can actually, um, you need to turn the EQ on and you need to turn the bands on just like you would in the, in the EQ in Logic. But what you can actually do is brighten, for example, brighten your reverb or make it much warmer. Um, or you can even make it much duller by getting rid of the top end. So you've got an EQ there as well, um, which is really useful. Um, even if you're not, you're not creating kind of warped reverb textures, uh, it's really useful to be able to EQ your reverb here because what you used to do was have your um, send to your reverb and then instantiate an EQ after it and then EQ that to get it to fit better. Sometimes, you know, if, you're, if you've got reverbs and delays, it's better to EQ them differently to your main channel so that you can hear them slightly better. Um, some reverbs can be quite... Um, muddy down in the bass end so you might want to actually cut out some of the bass so you'd actually end up with something like this and then potentially brightening it a bit up the top end as well. So you've got an EQ there and uh, interestingly as well you can actually reverse this whole effect so you can actually get the reverse reverb sound. So you can actually have some really interesting textures where the vocal will be for example on its own and then you'll hear the backwards reverb a bit afterwards um, so you can get some really interesting effects just using these um, so that's the synthesized IR um, just up here as well you've also got a, a control over the stereo width so you can make it more mono or stereo or inverted stereo so if you're having phase issues you can potentially play around with this um, You've got the length, which you can actually change. You can drag on that and, and make the sample longer. Um, so if you want it to actually go on much longer than it is to start with. Uh, and just down here, you've got the pre-delay, which is um, if I reset all of this and um, I'm going to just turn the filter off. The pre-delay is um, a small delay between the sound and its reverb. So at the moment it's only 11 milliseconds so you're almost instantaneously hearing the reverb blossom from the dry sound. If I turn this up there will be a gap between you hearing it and you hearing the reverb. If I turn it up even more There's a small gap between the reverb, and you should be able to hear it even more if I put it up to 200 milliseconds. So this is useful for, again, having reverb on something, but getting it slightly out of the way of the dry sound. So you can potentially, this is use, very useful for vocals, so that you can separate the dry and the, and the wet sound, so that you can actually... Um, still make out the words for example if you want a really big reverb you can you could use a, use a pre-delay to just get it out of the way of the dry sound a little bit um, you've got this spread which is again a stereo spread just making it slightly wider um, and you've also got this sample rate which were the original sample rate is set to 44.1 kilohertz uh, now what you can actually do is I just get rid of this, uh, if I brighten this a bit so we can hear it, what we can do is we can change the sample rate. So you can see that it's set to 44.1 kilohertz. If I go to 22 kilohertz, you can see that the length changes to four seconds because we are halving the sample rate, we're doubling the time. And again, if we halve it again, it goes down to eight seconds. And if we halve it again, now what the, the sample rate is going to change is it's going to make it slightly more lo fi. So it's going to make the reverb longer and also slightly grainier, slightly grittier. So you can hear it's almost kind of bell like and kind of grainy texture. That's because you're changing the sample rate. Now, what you can do is click this preserve length button. So it will turn it back to two seconds, irrespective of what you do. But there you can hear it's almost like a bit crusher. So it's really quite grainy. So I'm just going to turn that up and see what that sounds like. And as you go up, it should get a bit smoother in sound. 
So you've got choices there for, for distorting the sound as well. So that is the synthesized impulse response, um, which is a way of actually creating just from just from scratch. Or you've got this um, impulse response sample. So what you can do is if you load from from up here, you've actually got all these spaces created already. Now, rather than do that, what I'm going to do is click on this little button here, um, which is if you if you just hit load IR, it does exactly the same as if you would come up here and load it from here. Um, you can show them in the finder, which is only useful if you really want to copy them, but they're the same on all the machines, so you shouldn't need to do that. Similarly, when you're saving your logic project, um, you shouldn't need to say um, save all your reverb algorithms and impulse responses because they're the same on each in each machine so you're only going to end up copying data across and they can be quite large in file size as well what i'm going to do is click load ir and init which is initialize which is just reset it to its basic stand um, settings and what it's going to do is load it up in the finder and this is um this is what you get on your machines this is my machine i've, I've added some extra impulse responses so from the lexicon downwards these are ones I've actually found myself and added uh, which are modeling real um, real units so if I cancel that a minute what you'll find is you'll only get these settings you'll get one to six you'll only ever see these um, so don't don't be uh, worried that you're not seeing all of these extra ones because they're just one they're just my own personal ones so what you can do is I'm just going to go for a large space and in under large spaces you've got a choice of rooms, halls, plate reverbs, spring reverbs, indoor spaces, outdoor spaces and warped reverbs. So if we just go for a big hall for the start, the number down the side is how long the reverb is so they'll start short and get longer. So if we go down to say vintage hall, that should sound quite nice and it's going to load it up and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the reverb up a little bit so it's quite louder. So then what you can do is you can edit from there if you if you want to EQ it, if you want to change the volume envelope and all that kind of stuff. What you've also got is you've got some really quite nice small room sounds and you can see here that the, the seconds are much shorter. They're all about one and a half seconds or below. So let's go for realistic room. So you can hear that it's much, much more, uh, a much smaller room, and you've got all kinds of warp textures as well. So you've got um, modelling speakers and stuff. So you can make something sound like it's coming through an amp cabinet because this isn't just for reverb. This is modelling other spaces, so you can make it sound like it's coming out of a tiny little boxy speaker. So let's just try that. Let's um, let's put it through an amp cabinet. So to my ears, what that's doing is taking a lot of the high end off. Uh, let's have a listen to some of those other ones. Um, small toy. If I was to turn this up a bit, if you notice now that the dry sound is all the way down, so it's o you're only getting the sound through the effect. So there's some quite interesting possibilities there as to what you can do with the sound. Um, this is my go-to reverb. A lot of the time for um, especially drum rooms um, I tend to find a medium plate reverb and um, there's this soft plate here which sounds fantastic on things like drums and vocals because it's kind of it's bright but it's not too bright it's big but it's not too big and plate reverbs in general um, really help things sit in the mix so if you're trying to find that one uh, reverb that will help your vocal just sound a bit more there uh, and in part of the mix rather than the vocal sitting on top of it. Plates really help you do that. So that's the reverb really. Um, I hope that's um, cleared up quite a lot of the confusion that can be generated by looking at this for the first time. Um, get stuck in, have a look at some of the presets um, and just tweak around. But hopefully if you refer back to this video you should um, remember what each of these bits do. And uh, yeah, enjoy, have fun, see you next time.